As a follow-up to my most popular video to date, my lemon wine recipe, I decided to make a little change up. We're going to make one gallon of lemon lime wine. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to the DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Of course, as always, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button and I'll continue to do these on a regular basis. To make our lemon lime wine, we are going to need the following ingredients. I'm going to be using the zest and juice of seven lemons. Also the zest and juice of three limes. I'm going to be using Premier Blanc wine yeast. I'm going to be using a handful of raisins. We're going to be using five cups of sugar. It's a lot, but this wine will go dry by the time it's completed. so. We'll be back sweetening this wine at the, at the very end or using whatever back sweetening method of your choice. Because we're dealing with fresh fruit, I'm going to be using a peptic enzyme this time. We are going to need at least one gallon of water, something to do primary fermentation in. We're going to need something to do secondary fermentation in. Jar, jug, carboy, demijohn, take your pick, airlock with stopper hydrometer, and of course, sanitizing with star sands or whatever sanitation method you choose to use. All right, these lemons and limes have already been washed and scrubbed because you never can tell what might be on them. First thing we need to do is go ahead and begin the zesting process. I mean, you can use any method you want. You can use a microplaner. You can use a vegetable peeler, or as you can see in my case, I am going to be using a knife. I need to leave as much as the white pith behind because it will impart some bitterness <laughs> to the wine. Once all of these lemons and limes have been zested, I'm going to put everything in a straining bag just so I can keep everything together. If you don't have a straining bag, don't worry about it. You just have to strain them all out at the end when you're ready to move your wine from primary to secondary. All right, then again, you couldn't leave them in. All right, that's one. Okay, that's that. Go ahead and put this aside because we need to juice those later. I am going to use a straining bag now for my zest, so I can get that out the way. Okay, don't need this anymore. We can just put that off to the side. We need this, and we need a strain, uh, a juicer, and a measuring cup. All right, let's get started with this one. Thank you. 
Okay, that's one. Okay, last one. And that, my friends, is that. Go ahead and strain out the rest of this remaining juice. And then move on to our raisins. Yep, ended up with just... Uh, just under uh, under two cups, less than 16 ounces. And for you metric folk, that translates into about 460 milliliters. I mean, again, you don't have to be precise. We're not talking about exact measurements here, but that's all the juice I got out of those lemons and limes. Now with the raisins, you do not have to be precise. I'm just going to use a, a good size handful and I'm just going to give them a rough chop. And while I'm at it, what was wrong with this one? Ah, this one's got a little yucky spot. Get rid of that one. I mean, you don't need them finely minced or anything like that. That is good enough, and these can go in the straining bag. And let's go ahead and tie off our bag. There we go. Next step, the kitchen. Now that I'm in the kitchen, first thing I want to do is I want to pour off about two cups of our water to make up the difference from that two cups of juice we've got and the remainder goes in the pot. All right, let's cover that up and let's turn on the heat and let's bring this up to a boil. Now that our water has come up to a good rolling boil, let's go ahead and incorporate our sugar. I've already measured out the five cups of sugar that we're going to need, so really it's just a question of just stirring it in. Now to take the advantage of our hot water, we're going to go ahead and drop in our uh, our zest and raisins. And let's just keep that up to a boil for a good uh, five, oops, five or ten minutes just to make sure that uh, anything that might be crawling around on there is good and dead. And then we'll take it off the heat, let it come down to room temperature, go on to the next step. Now that everything has come down to room temperature, we're going to go ahead and start transferring everything over into our primary fermenter, starting with our zest and raisins, followed by our sweetened
And we'll follow that up with our lemon juice. And we want to give that a stir. And finally, we want to go ahead and add our peptic enzyme. About three quarters of a teaspoon is what I'm going to use. Let's go ahead and incorporate that. Give that another little stir. And now we can put our cap on loosely and give the enzyme a 12 hour to do its thing before we wrap this up by adding our yeast. We've given our peptic enzyme a good 12 hours to do its little thing. I'm just going to go ahead and just give it one last good little stir. And this is more to just introduce just that last little bit of oxygen that the yeast is going to need to get it started. I'm going to go ahead and add a half a teaspoon of yeast. Normally I use about a quarter of a teaspoon for a gallon, but this lemon wine being as acidic as it is, I'm going to go ahead and just double the amount just to be on the safe side. Spin that around a little bit. No need to stir it because we have now added our final ingredient, which will turn our lemonade into lemon lime wine. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that up. Nice and tight. <clears throat> and move this back a bit. This uh, fermenter does come with its own built-in airlock. I probably will remove this and put in a standard uh, bubbler that actually came with the unit. But that will do for the time being. There we go. For the next two or three days, we're going to go ahead and give that mixture a stir just to keep the oxygen level uh, at a point where the yeast will have a fighting chance after that three-day mark. Hands off, let it do its fermentation thing for about a good week or two. Then transfer it to secondary for the long haul for aging. There you go. First steps in getting our lemon lime wine underway. Again, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button and I uh, will continue to do these on a more regular basis.